Okay, now before I go and get things started with this review, I just want to be direct and I want to say that yes, the reason why I am doing this is mainly because this is a Patreon request by someone by the name of Peyton Michael. Now, during the time that I am recording this, Peyton has been a huge supporter and a patron of mine for several months now. And one day, with his big pledge, he decided to come up to me and ask if I can go and make a review out of a movie called October Sky. Now, to be very honest, I have never heard about this movie ever in my life, so this was honestly something new and I would probably be coming in absolutely fresh. But the reason why I immediately said yes was mainly because his approach in asking me for it was just so moving. In fact, I actually got the message right over here that I can read in front of you right now. And don't worry guys, um, I did ask permission and he did say yes, so it's all cool. But before I go and do that, I need to give you a little bit of context beforehand. Now, there was one day that I would do my monthly uh, chats with my patrons where we would just hang out and just talk about whatever, but Peyton refused to do so. Well, he, you see, he didn't refuse, he declined for that moment, mainly because it was the anniversary of his father's death, and he wanted to spend a few days in grievances. Now, afterwards, of course, he would come back and we would chat and stuff like that, but it was on that moment he just wanted some alone time uh, because of that tragic moment. So I completely understood and I let him off so that he could spend some time alone. But then, a few days later, he would go and write me this. So hold on a sec. <clears throat> the movie I request here is October Sky a 1999 biographical drama starring Jake Gyllenhaal and Chris Cooper. It's about a young man named Homer Hickman who wants to build and launch rockets, but his father wants him to be a coal miner. It's based on a true story and it was actually filmed in rural East Tennessee, which is where I used to live close to. I still live in Tennessee, but not in that specific area. Anyways, it was one of my dad's favorite movies, and I'd like to see what you think of it when you get the chance to review it. So after that little exchange, and of course, his big pledge, I just knew that I couldn't say no. So Peyton, and also for the Michael family, this one is for you guys. So now that we have this movie in front of us, it's time to go and ask what is this movie about? Where is it that this film takes us to? In 1957, the Russians made history by sending the first man-made object into space called Sputnik. Since it was also the time of the Cold War, this monumental moment worried anxious America, as fear of the unknown would be at an all-time high, especially in a little town in West Virginia called Coldwood. It was a very simple town, a town with simple needs, a simple lifestyle, and simple people. Seriously, the only things people seemed to aspire to be there were either to become a teacher or a housewife for women, and either a football player or a coal miner for men. Not to mention how most of the town speaks with the goofiest of southern accents. You sure are in a hurry to get yourself killed, huh, kid? There is a way to commit suicide, huh? It's got one of them little spy cameras in it. It takes pictures of every one of our missile bases. Better fly, and you can kiss your chances of losing your virginity, goodbye. Of course, I'm not saying that to mock the Coldwood people. I'm just saying that's how the movie portrays the town and its people, viewed from some nice cinematography to get some good shots of the place. For the most part, while the townsfolk may seem like they're more overdramatic, there is a sense that it's less the actor's fault and more caused by the decisions of the director, Joe Johnston. I'll give credit to the actors that they actually did a good job with the materials they're given even delivering some performances that can make the scenes feel genuine. They told me Hoskins can go into remission, so I might have some time. Is there anything I can do, Miss Riley? You can accept my apology. Homer. You know what? Sometimes you really can't listen to what anybody else says. While the setting may have given a whole lot of context in terms of the scenario and the obstacles in the movie, 
the town of Coldwood isn't necessarily the main reason why people would go and watch and remember October Sky. It's not the area that made a new chapter in American history, but rather a boy with a passion. While the people of Coldwood was a lot more interested in digging out coal, football, and picking up chicks, yeah, sadly, uh, toxic masculinity was kind of the norm back then. Homer Hickman, however, was a lot more interested in rockets. While there are a bit of similarities, this story of Homer with rockets going to space is not the same as the more familiar Simpsons episode. I mean, with a main character named Homer, it's hard not to think of the comparison. Damn, Homer. Homer, you sure got guts. Wake the hell up, will you, Homer? Well, tell me something, Homer. What's the matter, Homer? I am Homer! In this movie, while everyone was scared of Sputnik, Homer was actually curious, inspired even. This is where the film would set off his journey to go up in a town where everyone wanted to go down, even by breaking some social norms and teaming up with people that were unimaginable to be next to, including the school nerd. Mmm, you smell that? Ah, that is a mighty fine scent of exaggeration right there. You never forget it once you get your first big waft of it after Bohemian Rhapsody. Ah, nothing like the scent of exaggerating what actually happened for the sake of the movie. In all seriousness though, it's no surprise that a movie based on a book based on true events is not purely accurate to what actually happened. Like a few examples I could pull out include that gang consisted of six guys making rockets instead of four, and they weren't stealing old train tracks to get money. Don't mind me, I know you didn't do that in real life, so I'll be fine. But what makes the accuracy questionable is the way that the plot is rather predictable. As a story about a guy wanting to follow his dreams, it does go through the same patterns and arcs as other similar tales with all its ups and downs. Not to mention adding other plot elements that don't help its case, like a romance plot that has absolutely no point, or especially the tough dad that the main character longs for his approval. As someone who has seen a lot of animated films, I can say that I am quite familiar with that one. The town is dying, the mine is dying, everybody knows it here but you. You want to get out of here so bad, then go. Go! Yeah, I'll go! Yeah, I'll go! Go! I'll go! However, this is not to say that this movie has a bad story. On one hand, sure, the plot may lack some originality, but it's understandable that it had to cut out some of that in order to get more emotion onto the feature. In a way, the purpose of October Sky is not really to accurately tell how Homer Hickman and his friends revolutionized the space industry with his development of rockets, but rather to tell a story of determination, to capture audiences in the feels more than in the brains. Sure, it doesn't give a good first impression with a nearly cartoony town, but as the feature would progress, it becomes easier to get engaged and to be invested in wanting to see these boys successfully make a good rocket when the odds are against them. Maybe it wouldn't seem like that at first, but the movie would find a way to pull audiences' heartstrings with its execution. It also helps when the score composed by Mark Isham was beautifully crafted to assist in setting the mood. While it is based on a true story, the movie wants to use it in order to go and inspire others to go on their new path. That they don't necessarily always have to follow the status quo if they want to go and live their dream. In fact, the people who are remembered the most are the ones that would actually break that status quo in order to build a new path that no one has ever gone before. Now, ironically, the movie itself doesn't necessarily do that in order to go and express that message, but I cannot say that it's not effective. October Sky is a predictable yet well-crafted feature that presents how one man can change the world by following his own dreams. While it is possible that it doesn't deliver much in terms of writing, resulting in a story that can seem as amusing as coal mining, 
It does manage to make the most out of its execution with all the right people delivering some good acting, a moving score, and a heartfelt message that is meant to inspire the viewer than to educate. I can imagine this to be a favorite for space fans, so I would recommend this one to them. But if you're ever in the mood for something to just motivate you, something to tell you that you can achieve your goals, even when they can seem nearly impossible, then I say, give this one a watch. But, as I still gotta do my job as a film critic, I need to give this one a rating, and as a movie, I would give this a 7 out of 10. While not the strongest or the most original feature of its kind, it could still get the job done to get audiences emotionally invested. <laughs> okay, okay. I understand if there are some people out there that maybe they think I'm a little too harsh on this movie and that 7 out of 10 might be a little bit too low for this, but... What can I say? That's what happens when you go and ask a critic for a favor. <laughs> nah, but in all seriousness, if you guys enjoy the movie much more than I did, it's all good. I mean, at the end of the day, this is just nothing more but a reflection of my opinion on the movie, and that's pretty much it. No different than all the other reviews I've done, regardless of how emotionally invested I ended up being in some of them. If you've guys seen it, then chances are you probably really like it. You already got your own opinion of, about it and you already care about it. You already got some form of sentimental feelings about that movie. So at the end of the day, does it really matter what I think? Is my opinion really going to change anything on the movie or how you feel about it? You know, I'm just saying. And from there, I am highly aware that this movie has definitely touched the lives of not just Peyton and the Michael family, but towards many others as well. In fact, the movie is so beloved that it helped set up the annual Rocket Boys Festival, where people celebrate and honor the achievements of Homer Hickman and his pals at West Virginia, where the events took place, and in Tennessee, where the movie was filmed, even having appearances from the boys themselves. We do have a great heritage here. And it's not just the Rocket Boys, but let's just, let's celebrate this community. And we can kind of use the Rocket Boys as our touchstone here. And at the end of the day, it really is about following your own dreams. It ain't actually about the life of Homer Hickman or about literal rocket science, but to go and follow your own path in life in order to go and achieve your goals. Sure, there are going to be a lot of people out there that really want you to go and take the safe route where you end up as an average nobody, but the true people in life who would go and achieve greatness are the ones who would go and build their own path, that they would actually go and take risks and make the impossible possible. I mean, that's honestly something that I can relate to and that I can honestly understand. I mean, even with me. Like, after many years, I'm still going out there trying to make a good name out of, out of myself, like with an orange fedora or this yellow dragon shirt, mostly just talking about cartoons and Disney. And on top of that, also trying to go and pursue a career in voice acting. Now, that I know is going to be a bigger journey right over there. But regardless, with movies like October Sky, they do serve as great reminders about following your own dreams and to go onto your own paths and to actually go and build your own rockets. Now sure, it could take several attempts and a lot of them are going to blow up, but you never really know when that life-changing moment would finally come when they finally fly. Fly unless somebody pushes the button. It's yours if you want it. 